Hello and welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jack. We are your hosts, Aaron Zhang, Kaushal Vanua, and Jake Feldman. We wanted to discuss a hot topic at the forefront of American debate for over a century, the American dream. Many people believe it's unachievable, while others say it's a possibility. The American dream represents the ideal image of the U.S., a nation not only of freedom and democracy, but also of land, wealth, prosperity, factors we associate with the dream. The internet, social media, and other innovations make resources more accessible than ever before, yet parts of America still struggle socially and economically. Even as America's environment evolved, opportunism never went away. Jake and Kaushal present their views on the viability of the American dream today. I believe that achieving the American dream is not a possibility anymore. Consider the wealth gap in the U.S. A statistic chart on wealth distribution in 2022 shows the top 10% of earners hold a whopping 68% of the total wealth, while only 3.3% of the wealth belongs to the bottom 50%. When such a large percentage of the population has a disproportionate amount of money, how can they achieve their dreams? Great point, Kaushal. The data shows some raging economic disparities among social classes. However, the dream means more than making money. Let's hear what Jake has to say. Yes, I certainly agree that there are disparities in America. However, for many people, the American dream, like you said, doesn't solely mean making money. The Pew Research Center found what the American dream means to us Americans. Samantha Smith, research assistant, found the majority of Americans feel that personal freedom and a good family life are more essential than being rich. Moreover, 82% of people interviewed said they had already achieved their dream or were on track. America still offers a chance for prosperity, regardless of financials, and community and liberty are far more important than money. Sound argument as well. In America, oftentimes, wealth and fame do not constitute achieving your dream. Now I'd like to take a look at some pre-existing factors which may cause unfair advantages in reaching the dream. For one, the social-political atmosphere certainly plays a major role in one's success. Could you explain, Kaushal? Sure. Let's take a look at Langston Hughes' poem, Harlem. Hughes characterizes the death of dreams using vivid imagery like raisins drying up in the sun or rotten meat stinking. At this time, the 1950s, African Americans fought for civil rights and Jim Crow laws governed the South. Even now, people can't achieve the success they're capable of due to racial or ethnic barriers. Young Invincibles, an organization exposing these barriers, states that while minority enrollment rates in college have risen, there is an unusually large percentage of African American students attending for-profit colleges. These predatory colleges sink the students further into debt. These students are attracted by the promise of employment but instead they find themselves without a stable job with massive student loans. And to top it off, 22% of them default, which is much higher than nonprofit colleges. We can see how racial, ethnic, and financial factors are all connected here, and they create big hurdles for people trying to reach their dreams. Wow, I never knew the American environment could be so hostile towards certain people. Certainly in the past, segregation and discrimination has plagued our nation. However, I do think the U.S., as a model of democracy and equality, should strive to make the dream accessible to anyone, regardless of identity. How has America progressed in this aspect, Jake? I'm really glad you mentioned this, Aaron. Despite America's dark history of ethnic degradation, we have recognized that this nation needs diversity and equity in order to progress. According to the UN Human Development, the Gender Inequality Index has been steadily decreasing in the United States over the past three decades, from 0.294 in 1991 to 0.179. This means that women have increased their labor force participation, empowerment, specifically representation in government, health, and education by almost 50% in just 30 years. Moreover, the poem Harlem captures the disparities Kaushal talked about. Modern films, however, like In the Heights, 
one about the United Hispanic community and striving for dreams in New York, tell us that anyone can find peace and personal freedom here. Thank you, Jake. There's definitely a greater effort today to give all groups in this country a shot at success. It's about time to wrap up, but there's still a lingering question. Does the current culture encourage youth to pursue their dreams? There is a huge debate around pop culture's influence on our ambitions. Kaushal, would you please elaborate? Of course, Aaron. Any teen or young adult would agree that pop culture shapes our aspirations, whether for the worse, better, or changing it entirely. I think that certain aspects of pop culture can change our dreams for the worse. I agree that elements of today's world like social networking can form and strengthen bonds, but there are major downsides. The 2020 Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma, exposes the many negative effects of pop culture, especially social media. This film incorporates many ex-senior officers of media giants, spreading a very similar message. Kids and teens' posts on social media change the groups they join and the goals they set. Screen addiction and cyberbullying pose serious mental health risks, especially to young kids. Competition among peers and teammates, even as an adult, can lead to toxic relationships, limiting self-confidence and motivation. Kids' views of themselves are warped with negativity, posing a barrier not conducive to success. Jake, I wonder, what's your response to Kaushal's claim that today's mass culture stifles people's potential to make a better life for themselves? Well, while culture can lower self-esteem, we shouldn't ignore the benefits. ASU reports the benefits of using YouTube to learn, stating that the platform significantly reduces online education costs and creates a plethora of learning resources. I myself watch Heimler's History and Org Chem Tutor to learn. Students who embrace self-education through these channels, which are completely free, move closer to their dreams, and we should credit modern culture for fueling ambition. Furthermore, social media provides a platform for anyone to share what they love. For example, Popeyes, Netflix, and Grubhub are a few companies that exploded on social media. Pop music singers Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber both gained popularity on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. These are great contentions, both of you. Social media and pop culture have many negative effects, but it also provides an amazing platform to learn and express yourself. Well, that concludes this episode of Jamming with Jack on the American Dream. Thank you, Kaushal and Jake, for sharing. And let us know what you think about the American Dream and check out our other videos on our channel. See you next time.